and then <laughs> and then you've got a um, a question from Johan Otto. Yeah, so um, Johan's written into us. I'm going to paraphrase phrase this question just a little bit because it is a topic sure. that we dealt with um, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he he actually does acknowledge at the the start of his question that he's he's bringing it up again because he just wants a little bit more information on it. So we'll address it again. But um, basically, the question relates to um, a, a story that came out a couple of uh, probably about a month or two ago, where there was a, a story about a hijacking that happened of someone's home. And basically, they had gone on holiday, and you know people move into the property and have hijacked the home. And then either you know sublet the home or live there themselves. Alternatively, um, a situation where people just you know break into the home and start living there with you in the circumstances, and there's nothing you can do, um, you know. And obviously, what happens there? But but the long and short of of Johan's uh, sort of question is, you know, how prevalent are circumstances like that? You know, is this something that we experience often? Is it something that, mm. as a homeowner, um, you need to be worried about in the circumstances and something you need to be looking out for. Sure. Yeah. So I suppose I, I suppose it comes down to our um, experience or experiences uh, with this type of situation. So um, if I speak for BSA, uh, we don't, uh, we haven't received any instructions from um, people going on holiday or holiday makers, um, their properties being hijacked. So, and this this comes from like having quite a big chunk of evictions um, as our core business. Very, um, I haven't received any instructions on short holidays. Um, I have, I think, once or twice seen instructions where a person has almost semigrated, if you want to say it like that, where they abroad for six months of the year or something along those lines. I think that consistent uh, quietness in that property may sometimes lead to break-ins. More prevalent when it comes to agricultural land and farming areas, I think with these big fields and things like that, um, I think they just see the opportunity where it's very quiet. We can just go in, uh, not even take over your house, but just set up stuff and then you get there and suddenly you find that certain rooms have been taken over, certain cottages or whatever the fact is. Um, it, those are very long, uh, longer term than your I'm gone for a week and somebody suddenly moved in. Definitely have not seen short term I've gone for shopping and somebody's moved into my property. I haven't seen that at all. So if a purely on frequency, I would say that the shorter periods uh, aren't being experienced. I'm not saying it can't happen, and I'm not saying there's no recourse. This isn't. A, yeah, I'm not addressing recourse yet. But frequency, BSA, a short term, um, nothing. Yeah, um, I, I got to say from from our side as well, SSLR. Um, I, I'm in a similar position. I've I've seen more. You know, I've seen more holiday makers that I had to eject from yeah. their hotel rooms then I've seen people move into people's houses while they're on holiday. Um, so, you know, from, from our experience, no, this is, this is not something that's prevalent. It's not something that you should, you know, concern yourself with now that December's coming, you're going away for two weeks, so you're going to lose your house. No, I, I don't think that's a, that's a thing. Um, you know, uh, again, I want to, you know, sort of reflect on what you said there. They are, it's not impossible that this happens, but in, you know, it can happen in certain circumstances where, a house has been abandoned for X period of time, um, you know, and, and certainly, you know, in, you know, sort of in a city settings where there are buildings that have been, you know, completely taken over that, that does happen. But on an individual level, on a, on a one person house level, I, I've never seen one uh, come across my desk. Mm, absolutely. And then maybe just to kind of wrap it up from my side, happy, happy with the recourse that is available, should it happen? Um, because remember you are in possession. So even if a week goes by, you are strictly speaking in possession of that property. The court recognizes it as possession. So it's the same as a tenant. If a tenant, um, you know, goes on a business trip, a landlord can't go in and say, oh, well, he's not in possession. So I'm just locking the doors because he is, he has his stuff inside. His intention is to be in possession. So the same thing applies to the owner. Somebody takes it over and your intention was to go on holiday, but retain possession of the property. Physical possession is not necessary for spoliation order. It's the intent and the act of actually possessing. So if you get back and there's people there, 
act quickly naturally so approach like nick or myself uh, but if you bring a spoliation order and the person's not supposed to be there um you you'd be good uh you'd have ample re uh, recourse to be able to claim the property back absolutely and um i i it's something that i, I want to be cautious about uh, in terms of the um the uh, rental housing act but there is scope for urgent proceedings, but mm. I want to be very careful about this because urgent proceedings are not what most people mm. think. Mm. Um, you can't just bring urgent proceedings. And I understand clients position where they think every eviction is urgent. Mm. Mm. It's, mm. it's not. Unfortunately, mm. the courts are, you know, look carefully at these things. And the reason that we have an act is the court wants to look at all relevant circumstances. Mm. However, if you were in a position where, you know, someone tried to move in, while you were sitting there in your living room and they, you know, come in and put their bag down and say, I'm moving in here now. Mm. Um, the act does have provisions for urgent proceedings, which you can bring in court, similar to a spoliation order. You could be in front of court in, you know, a matter of days or hours, depending on the circumstances. Mm. But I want to stress, you have to have very, very good circumstances mm. for a court to make such an order. Sure. But, Absolutely. Um, the point I'm trying to make is the law does recognize that there are certain search, uh, certain mm. circumstances where urgent, urgent eviction proceedings may be necessary. Mm. Um, and, and, and it's possible to do that, but something like that has to be done in very close consultation with your attorney because 99.999% yeah. of, of your evictions are not going to meet that standard. You're going to have to have that one in a million, you know, mm. sort of case. That would convince the court yes we have to have this on a on a very urgent mm -hmm. scale yeah and look it's possible that circumstances like this may meet that criteria and like um like nick said i mean there's urgent eviction proceedings in terms of pie there's um there's obviously spoliation i mean uh, i mean i'm not even going to get into a conversation of a counter spoliation and what you know what what would be permissible um so don't all we're saying is don't panic uh, we already mentioned three different things that could potentially be done, but because again, this isn't prevalent and doesn't happen frequent, frequently, you're not going to find a lot of case law in it. And us as lawyers look at history and say, well, the courts have always treated it in X fashion. So we know that this is what we can do. And we know that this is an uphill battle because this is relatively a new scope. Um, I would go so far as to say I'm confident that we'd be able to deal with it relatively quickly. Um, but until you know, we start seeing a bit more court cases justifying how that's supposed to look like, it would be a question of relying on your attorney to, to you know, act in the right way and to apply his knowledge. Uh, and that's probably where a specialist attorney is probably going to come in a lot, a lot better than someone that a generalist because we at least know where to look and how, how to move very quickly on very specific things.